Um, it, it, it blessed me in so many different ways. Um, and just to be able to see uh, what that teaching did to my life, what it did to those who reached out to me, those who uh, were connected, <clears throat> how the year of the comeback season uh, 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 changed and shifted mindsets. And I've just to watch people go through promotions last year. We watched people get promoted. We watched confidence levels go up. Uh, we watched relationships uh, uh, cultivate and develop. We watched so many people overcome so many different things, relocation, new houses, um, as a result of the comeback season. And so as we shift uh, into the word for 2024, as we shift into the word for 2024, uh, just think about the last few weeks that we've taught uh, as we closed out 2023. And one of the things that I harped on over the last few weeks uh, of 2023 was this phrase right here, that you can permit, you can make a comeback, even though we completed the comeback. But remember what I said, you, you can complete, you can complete the comeback, make your comeback, even the score, even take the lead, but still lose the game. You, you can make the comeback, even the score, even take the lead, but yet still lose the game. That was one of the things that we released as we closed out the year. Um, and what I mean by that is when I said the comeback was complete. See, when you make it from a sports vernacular, so many teams can be down by 20 points in basketball. I'll use basketball. But yet you exert so much energy to come back, so much energy, so much resources, so much of your time to come back and even the score or even take the lead. But what happens is sometimes you can get burnt out. Sometimes you can get burnt out. And when you get burnt out, watch this. What happens is the other team gets a resurgence. And they can come back and win the game as well. And, and so, 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 what am I saying? What am I saying? What am I saying? Um, <clears throat> You know, we also talked about don't grow weary doing well, but in due season, you shall reap if you don't faint. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we shared that. But I'm here to tell you today. You've completed your comeback. And now it's my assignment, it's our assignment to give you the word for 2024. <clears throat> because you didn't been through enough hell, right? You done been through enough hell. You done been through so much over the years. You, 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 <clears throat> you, you've been through so much over the years, right? You, you've gotten word after word that this is your year. You're going to make money. And this is your year that, that, that you're going to stay alive. This is your year and that, that this and all of this different thing. We got all of these resolutions. But yet we find ourselves back to where we started at, right? But God said this, everything that you've been through over the years was preparation for this moment right here. Somebody put in the chat, preparation, 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 preparation. Even again, from a sports vernacular, There's certain seasons that teams go through throughout the season. So you can be in the same season, but yet have to deal with certain things throughout the season, th certain things throughout the season. You got preseason. You, you got training season. You got regular season. We got postseason. You got off season. You got you know preseason, training season, regular season, postseason, championship season, new. And then watch this. You start all over again. New season. Last year we came out. We're coming out of our comeback season. So the question that we ask is, what do I do now? I made the comeback. What is next?
<laughs> you have your Bibles, which I hope you do. I ask that you turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 26. This is going to be our foundational book that we're going to teach out of. <clears throat> this is going to be our foundational book. This is going to be our foundation. Now, y'all know we'll still bounce, we'll find other scriptures, but we'll always revert back to what we're going to teach out of today. Y'all ready? Somebody say amen. Somebody say, I'm ready. 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 <clears throat> y'all share this out. Instagram, Facebook, Zoom. Share y'all links out. Invite your friends. Invite your family in. Invite your family and Let them know we are in the building. We're about to release. 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 And it opens up this. I'm, a set, this, I'm setting the stage, setting the stage. It says there was a famine in the land. <laughs> Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Isaac. And <clears throat> I'm sorry. Let's start over. There was a famine in the land. <clears throat> I apologize. I'm all in your ear. I apologize. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to, <clears throat> or in verse 20, or verse four, verse one. Uh, and it says, Abimelech, Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the, and the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. It says, <clears throat> then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. We're in Genesis chapter 26, verse two now. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, who is him? The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, <clears throat> do not Go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. So right now, there's a famine in the land. Things don't look the way you thought they should look. Then all of a sudden, <clears throat> Isaac goes to, uh, to, uh, 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 to, he goes to Abimelech. The king of the Philistines of Gerar. And then all of a sudden, the Lord shows up and releases a word to Isaac to give him instructions. And the instructions are, do not go down to Egypt. <clears throat> Don't go to the place where you thought that you should go. Don't go to the place that you thought was going to look the way you wanted it to look. Boy, boy, y'all better get y'all peoples in here. Don't, don't go down that route. But here's the instructions I'm going to give you, Isaac. I want you to live in the land of which I shall tell you. God says, first of all, in this in this in this season that we're about to release to you guys, that the word that we're about to release to you guys is all about obeying the instructions of the Father. God's about to give you some instructions. Oh, God help me, somebody. God's about to show up and give you all some, give us some instructions. In this year, he's about to give us some instructions in this year. And the instructions are not going to look like or sound like what we thought that they should look like. Because right now we're already in the midst of a famine. And we're about to go to a place that we think that we're comfortable with. But God says, do not go down into Egypt and live. He said, but go to the land of which I shall tell you. I'm about to give you some instructions. He says, when you get there, I want you to do verse three, dwell in this land. He said, but here's the thing. You won't be by yourself. Somebody put in the chat. I'm not alone. He says, I I'm not alone. He says, I will be with you. I will be with you. God says, I'm going to send you somewhere and you will not be by yourself. 
He said, watch this. Then the next thing he says, and he says, I will be with you and bless you. God says, watch this. When I send you there, I'm going to send you to a place. And if you obey me, the provisions will already be there. He says, the provisions will already be there. That's what the word says. It says, he says, do not go down into Egypt and live there. The land, go toward the land which I should tell you. I want you to dwell there. I want you to set up shop. He says, I will be with you. He says, I will be with you. And not only will I be with you because I'm with you and I'm going somewhere where I'm instructing you to go. And because you follow the instructions, he says, I will bless you. He says, I will bless you. Somebody says, bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. I'm told you, I'm taking a little different approach today. Somebody say, bless you, Lord. Bless me, Lord. I'm trying to get you. I better follow these instructions, man. Y'all better follow these instructions. He says, I will be with you and I will bless you. But here's the thing. This is what I love about God. This is why it's so important. What I'm about to say, the next piece I'm about to share with you, it is so important that we heed the instructions of the Father. Kimba, it is so important in this season that we heed the instructions of the Father. Ms. Vivian, it is so important that we heed the instructions of the Father. Ms. Shirley, it is so important that we heed the instructions of the Father. Ms. Catherine, it is so important that we heed the instructions of the Father. Why is that? Somebody say, because it's not all about me. Woo. Bernita, mom, it's not all about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This season that we're about to embark on, watch this, it's not all about you. The reason why it's so important for us to follow the instructions of God and to be where God wants us to be, watch this, not only does he say, I will bless you, but he also goes on to say, for to you and your descendants, descendants. In other words, God says, I will not only be with you and I will not only bless you, but I'm also going to bless your descendants. I'm going to bless those that are connected to you in this season. And so what happens is if we're not in the right place, if we're not in the right place where God wants us at, guess what? Not only do we miss out on our blessing, but those that are connected to us will miss out too. So, so, so now, now when you're getting upset and rolling your eyes at your family members and your children and your spouse, your, your friends, your job, watch this. The reason why you're rolling your eyes at them is because you're out of place. And because you're out of place, that means the blessing can't connect with them also. Right now, somebody put in the chat, it's a team effort. God, it's a team effort. It's a team effort. It's a team effort. God. It's a team effort. Oh, God. It's a team effort. So he says, so he says, watch this. He says, so when, when, when your captain is in place, watch this. You, uh, uh, we, what the Bible says, we are one body, right? We are one body. So how can my head be in one room and my body be in the other? My body, go, my, 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 my body goes where my mind tells it to go. My body goes where my mind tells it to go. My, my eyes blink when my, my, when my mind tells my eyes to blink. My hands move when my head tells my hands to move. It's a team effort. And one of the things I used to tell my children all the time growing up, be where you're supposed to be. Be where you're supposed to be.
Because when you're not where you're supposed to be, that means everything else is going to be out of line. Everything is going to be out of whack. But when you're so where you're supposed to be, I'll never forget. I'll never forget when, when I had bought my son a car um, a few years ago, and he was driving my car to back and forth to work. But I'd already had his car already lined up, right? I'd already had his car lined up, and I gave him instructions. I said, "Hey, when you come home from school, I said, come straight home from school." That was the instructions. Come straight home from school. I get this phone call while I'm at work. And you know how that parental thing just kick in. You just know something ain't something ain't good on the other line when that phone rings without even talking to him. But that phone ring, you already know, oh man, something something crazy done went down. He he says, yo, I just had an accident. You know, after I cleared, make sure he was good and make sure he was safe and all of that stuff. I asked him, I said, where are you at? He was not where he was supposed to be. So he had an accident in my car. The same day I was about to give him his car. But it was because he wasn't where he was supposed to be. So because he wasn't where he was supposed to be, watch this. Everything else hadn't happened. Stuff didn't roll down, right? And so what God is saying in this season that we're about to release, this word that we're about to release, it's important that we're, we're that we're so that we're it's important that we're, we're that we are where we are supposed to be. That was a tongue twister. I can't know how to say it. So he says, I will give, I will be with you, bless you to you and your descendants. That means if it put it like this, there are so many people that haven't been born yet that are connected to you, that haven't been born yet, that are screaming and saying, Yo, get back in place, get back in position. Be where you're supposed to be. Get your money lined up. Get your mindset right. Get your, get your affairs in order. Because, in other words, I don't want to be born into chaos. I don't want to be born into turmoil. I don't want to be born into to havoc. I want to come into a place where things are already where they're supposed to be. Your children shouldn't have to grow up in debt. Our children should not have to come into a world where our affairs in chaos. Our children shouldn't have to have cable bills in their name at the age of three and four. Ooh, did, I, did I say that? <laughs> did, did, did I say that? So he says, so he says, so he says. So he says, so he says, I will give, he says, I will bless you and your descendants. I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Keep in mind, remember, Isaac is a son of Abraham. Isaac is walking in the favor of. And he's walking in the favor of his father. He is walking in the promises of his father. And a lot of us, what happened is we've lost sight of our benefits. We lost sight of our promises. Why is that? It's because life happened. Life liked. And what happens is we lose sight of who we are. We lose sight of who we are based off of, of life. And so when you lose sight of life, we forget about the promises that were made to us. We will forget about the promises that were made to us. When was the last time you prayed and said, I'm a seed of Abraham? I'm a seed of Abraham. Don't you know that we're seeds of Abraham? God said that God's going to bless those that bless him. We're seeds of Abraham. God said, not only are, is Abraham blessed, 
but everything that comes out of Abraham is blessed. Generations after generations are blessed as a result. Of the seed of Abraham. And so God says, I need us to get into a place where we tap into our kingdom benefits. What's the point of having health, having health insurance on your job if you're not going to use your health, your, your insurance? You're not going to go to the eye doctor to get your eyes checked, to go to the dentist to get your teeth checked, to go to the doctors to get your, watch this, that's a part of your 401k kingdom plan. So God is saying in this season, I, I need to make sure I need you to understand who you are. See, we just came out of comeback season, but the reason we have to go through a comeback season is because we forgot who we were and we fell off along the way. Am I talking to somebody? And when you fell off along the way, watch this, you lose sight that you're supposed to be wealthy. You lose sight that you're supposed to be a millionaire. You lose sight that you're supposed to be debt free. And I'm here to tell you, 2023 was amazing to me. I, I was sharing with my mom not long, not long ago, the other day, that I'm in a position I'm able to do things that I've never been, that I never thought that I was able to do. You couldn't have told me at the beginning of 2023 and at the end of 2022 that I would be in a position that I'm in right now. Now, granted, I ain't where I want to be. Still got a long way to go. But see, what happens is when you hang out in Loader Bar so long, you think that's all the life that there is, is Loader Bar. You think that you're supposed to live from the bottom. You think that you, you can't see yourself at the top. You can't see yourself moving progressive. You can't see yourself happy. You can't see yourself married. But God says, watch this. I'm here to tell you right now, if you follow the instructions of understanding who you are in this season, God. And I still ain't got to the word yet. <laughs> oh, God, this is blessing me. So he says, and I will make your this is, He says, I give you all the lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. He's telling Isaac, he's saying, hey, I ain't forgot you. I made a vow to your dad, and that same vow that I made to your dad extends to you, not only you, but everything that came out of you. Somebody say, right, somebody put in the chat, my womb is healthy. My womb is wealthy. My womb is healthy. My womb is wealthy. Truth of the matter is, we can really declare, watch this, based off of what the word says, the word says that my parents' womb was healthy. My parents' womb was wealthy. My parents' womb was blessed. Because watch this, if I'm, if I'm a seed coming out of my parents' womb, God, I'm talking to somebody. That means, watch this, not only do I pick up the DNA of how I look, not only do I pick up the DNA of having the same hands as my father, the face like my mother, or, 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 or the eyebrows like my father, or the ears like this person, or the nose like that person, but I also, according to the scripture, I also pick up the DNA of the father that I walk wealthy, that I walk healthy, that I win in everything that I touch. I'm not talking to somebody, that everything about me is blessed. Oh, God, why, why, why do I have to hold on to the DNA that I only look like my mother and that I look like my father? Why, if, if, if they are, if my parents and their, and, 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 and their ancestors were seeds of Abraham's, then that comes straight down through the lineage of who I am. And so what that means is that I operate as the seed and the child of Abraham. Not only do I pick up the flaws, but I also pick up the wins. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, God, 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 God. I only, I also pick up the wins. I pick up the good stuff. But the enemy has tricked us in such a way and fooled us in such a way to make us think that we only pick up physical characteristics. They only make us think that, that we pick up all the negative connotations of our family. We should be in a position where we're not passing down debt to our children. God. 
But the word says that we're supposed to be in a position to take care of leaving an inheritance for our children's children's children. Hey, Tiffany, blessings to you. And so, 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 so God is saying, God, God is saying, grab a hold of your true identity. You are not who the world says you are, but who God says you are. And God says, watch this. God says that you are a seed of Abraham. You are one of the descendants of Abraham. In verse 4 in Genesis 26, it says, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. God, I will make the stars, I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. What did God say in Genesis uh, uh, chapter 1? To be fruitful and to what? Multiply. I still haven't got to the verse where, we, where I'm releasing the word at. But I'm laying the foundation of what we're going to be teaching on this entire year. He says, I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. See, we're too busy trying to give our descendants uh, 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 all these Jordans, all these Playstations, all these TVs. All this debt where God has said, I'm trying to give you your descendants land. One of the things that I want to do for my daughter, she's not on here, but one of my desires, Tiffany, Shana B, Kimba, Mom, I want to be able to buy my daughter a house. I want to be able to put her in a place that she calls home. That's one of my desires. That's my desire. He says, I will make, this is what Genesis chapter 26, verse four says. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. All these lands. I miss you too, Shane. I miss you too. this and y'all keep this in mind God's releasing this word in the midst of a famine he's making these promises to Isaac in the middle of a famine for those that watch world news what are we in what does the world say that we're in right now What does the news, for those that watch world news, it's one word. What is the world saying that we're in right now? Come on, somebody give it to me. Somebody put it in the chat. No, not the end, not the end, not the end. It's another word. Somebody put it in the chat. There you go. There you go, Kimba, a recession. The world says that we're in a recession. <laughs> that time they were in a famine, which is in lack, which is like a recession. God is making these promises to Isaac in the middle of a recession. Listen, y'all, y'all put a pen right there. Y'all put a pen right there. Ooh, boy, 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 boy. He says, look, watch this, watch this. He says, he says, I will make your descendants multiply as the stars in heavens. I will give your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed.
And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. What am I saying? Everything that God has promised you, I'm sorry, Abraham, Isaac, everything that came out of them, God says we're descendants and you have access to the same benefits. You're blessed. Your womb is blessed. The womb you came out of was blessed. The seed that, that you came out of is blessed. Those that came out of you are blessed. You are blessed. Now, how was God able? I wish your name was on here. Um, how was God able? To make a promise like that to Isaac. Verse 5, and I still ain't got to the word yet. Y'all stay with me. Because Abraham obeyed my voice. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. My commandments, my statutes, and my laws. God says in this season that I'm about to release to you all, it all starts with obeying the voice of God. It all starts with Miss Shirley, Miss Vivian, Kemba, Catherine, Shana. Bernita, mom, and whoever's on Facebook, live or by replay. It all starts with obeying the voice of God, keeping the charge of God, keeping the commandment of obeying the commandment of God, obeying his statutes and obeying his laws. God says, in this season, you cannot do stuff your way. Because remember, it was our way that caused us to fall. To put us in the position where we had to make a comeback. See, when we follow the instructions of God, you'll never have to make a comeback. Why? It's because you're all ready there. Now, if I had the time, I would take you back. See, a lot of people think Abraham was blessed. And I shared this with my nephew a few weeks ago. A lot of times people think that Abraham was blessed the moment that he had Isaac. But Abraham was really blessed in Genesis chapter 12, when the Bible says that when God said, leave your country, leave your mother, leave your father, leave everything that's familiar with you. I'll take you to a place, make your name great, blah, blah, blah. But then the Bible says in verse four of Genesis 12, it says, then Abraham departed as the Lord instructed. That was the moment that Abraham became blessed. Why? Because he obeyed the voice of God. God says, in this season, don't try to do it in your own might. But I really need you to follow the instructions of God. Now, y'all ready for the word? Somebody say, I'm ready for the word of 2024. 
What season are we in now? See, we started this thing from game time. We started with then we shifted to uh uh new season, then we went to momentum shifting season, then we went to the comeback season. Here, okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 12. And this is really the foundational verse. See, 20, all of 26 is our foundational text book that we're going to be in and out of. But Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 and 13 are where we really are going to focus the entire year on. It says, verse 12 in Genesis 26. Then Isaac, keep in mind, they're in the middle of a, a famine. They're in the middle of a famine. They're in a recession. God's giving instructions. And this is what happens. Then Isaac sowed in that land. And reaped in the same year. He reaped in the same year. He reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. So for those that are on Instagram or Facebook, those that are on Zoom, you actually, if you look over my shoulder, you'll see what the new word is. Welcome to, you just came out of your comeback season. Now, I want to introduce you all to your championship season. All right. This is, this is your championship season. Oh, boy, chills just came over me. This is your championship season. Everything that you've been through in life was to prepare you for this moment right here. See, champions are not won when you get the trophy. That's just the, that's just the result of it. Watch this. But champions are actually made in the preseason when nobody is looking, when you're going through all the hell, when you're having to put the work in, when you're having to live like nobody else so that you can live like nobody else. Those moments when you cut out lunches and cut out Starbucks and all of that stuff, it was to prepare you for this season right here. Somebody say, this is my championship season. Ah, this is my championship season. This is my victory season. This is my championship. Oh, God help me, somebody. Uh, okay, I, I'm, I must be in this thing by myself right here. But this is your championship season. Ooh. In the middle of a famine, Shana, the Bible says that Isaac sowed in the land. He sowed in that land. Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Not in the land, but he sowed in that land. Which land did he sow in? The land where God told him to go. So a lot of times we sow in places that God didn't tell us to sow. Sometimes we run a play that even though the play worked once before, but God says, I'm calling a different play. And I want you to run the play the way that the play was designed to be ran. Because if you don't run it the way that I designed it to be ran, it can get stopped. I just got done watching a football game the other day. I know I'm a huge Alabama fan. Roll tight, right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. And the game came down to one play. They called a good play, but the player ran it the wrong way. But the player ran it the wrong way. And because he ran it the wrong way, he got stopped. But God said in this famine, see, famine says, watch this. The world says to save up and, 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 and to store up and blah, 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 blah. But God is saying in this season, um, in, even though you call it a recession, even though you call it a famine, but I need you to sow in that land that I'm going to instruct you. And so in other words, God is saying, if you're going to be in a champion in this season, we must obey the laws of the land. I mean, obey the laws 
calls of our head coach. We must follow the leader. We must listen to what God has to say. And in order for us, Shana, to get into a position to hear what God has to say, guess what? We're going to have to meditate. We're going to have to be in prayer more. We're going to have to get into his word more to find out what the instructions are from God. Just because I won with that particular play doesn't mean that I'm built. God says, I got another play for you to run. So that's why it's so important that we're in tune with the voice of God, the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit can tell us where to sow, where to go. God, God says, if you follow my instructions, I promise you, you'll win in this season. You'll have a championship season. You won't need to have a comeback. You won't need to. You, you, you will win. You will champion in this season. He says, then Isaac sowed in that land. Not in the land, not in a land, but he sold in that land. What land? The land where God told him to. What if Isaac never went to the place where God told him to go? What if Abraham never got up when he told him to go sacrifice Isaac? It says, then Isaac sold in that land. And then he reaped. Mom, mom, it says, he says, and then watch this, because he sold in that land, listen to the levels of this, y'all. Y'all ready to see levels of championships? Y'all ready to see levels? See, for those that like Michael Jordan, he won six titles. Just Each one had a different level. Kobe Bryant won five. Each one had a different level. LeBron four, each one a different level. Tom Brady won six. Each one's a different level. Each one's that they always ask which one was better. And each one, they always say something like each one represented something different in their life. So God is saying in this championship season, this level to these victories. And God says, I want, thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, I want, I want to encourage you with this piece right here. He says, you can't become content. Somebody put, prophesy and speak a word, encourage somebody in the chat right now. Do not become content. Do not become content. Somebody post that. I'm trying to tell you. I'm giving y'all the instructions. Y'all heed the instructions. Do not become content. Because when you're going, when you become content, you're going to miss each level of your breakthrough. You're going to miss each level of your breakthrough. Listen to this. This level to see life. I was talking to my sister um, the other day, and I dreamt about it last night, and I prayed about it this morning, and it hit me this morning when I prayed it. And I broke down. I said, God, thank you for sustaining me. See, when you operate in a place of being sustained, that's just enough. But God says in this championship season, I'm requiring more. And if you give, if you, if I'm give, if you give more, and I'm not even talking about financially, I'm talking about more of you. God says you'll get more. I was thinking about I was I, my dad was in a play years ago, and he was telling the story of this preacher. This preacher went to this old country town. I wish I can tell it the way the script was in the play, but he said that he went down to this church. He had to go preach at this church, uh, Catherine, and I went down to this country church and preached one of the best sermons of his life. And the guy went and you know they were taking up an offering, and again, this is not. This is not where I'm trying to go with this. I'm just giving an example. I want you to like, oh, he's giving his word because he want more money. That, that ain't me. I promise you. And the guy preached and he put a, he pulled out one in his pocket and pulled out a nice $5 crisp bill, brand new $5 bill, crispy, and put it into the offering bucket. After service was over, the, the guy and his, the path, the preacher and his son were about to walk out to the car to go home and, um, the pastor, the host pastor of the church, you know, ran outside. Hey, pastor, hey, 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 don't leave yet. I want to bless you. We want to bless you. And the guy was like, no, you don't have to bless me. He said, no, we got to bless you. We got to bless you. So the guy reaches in his pocket and says, here, I, he pushed out and gave him this crisp 
five dollar bill. <laughs> and so they're driving home. The father and the son are driving home, and he looks over to his son. He says, "Son, what have you learned about today's message?" He said, "Man, it was a word it was good." He said, "But what did you learn?" He said, "Well, if you have gotten given more, you would have gotten more." <laughs> and so, what am I saying? God is saying in this season, for what I what what I believe what I'm what I'm believing for you to walk in, and what I want to give you is going to cost more of you. See, victories cost. There's a price on a victory. Are with me? There's a price on victory. There's a price on victory, and so each level is going to cost you more. So if you look at Genesis 12, 26, verse 12, it says, then Isaac sold in that land. And when he sold in that land, this is the result. He says, and he reaped in the same year, in the midst of a famine, because he sold in that land during a famine and followed the instructions of God. The word says, and he also reaped in the same year that he sold. He also reaped in a famine season. He also reaped during a recession. How much did he reap? He reaped a hundredfold. See, that's the first level. He reaped, the amount that he reaped was initially a hundredfold. So in other words, he got back even what he put in. Y'all with me? And that, that's, that's level one, is that he reaped what he got back. That's level one, is that he reaped what he got back. The second level of this thing was, he said, then Isaac sold in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. So he got back even what he sold into it. Right. He got back even. So he says, I got back a hundredfold. And then the Lord blessed him. So that's the next level. So the first level of the win was he got back what he invested. The second level was the Lord blessed him. And so, you know, when the Lord blesses, it's more than what you put in. God, am I talking to somebody? He, 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 he blessed him with more than he got. That's, that's the that's the championships cost you. And he said he blessed him. Verse 13, the man began to prosper. That's another level. So not only did he reap in the middle of a famine a hundredfold, got back what he put in, then the Lord added a blessing on top of that. He added some interest on what he sold. And then he says, then the, then then he says in verse 13, then the man began to prosper. In other words, watch this. Not only am I living check to check, but I'm also in another level. I'm in another tax bracket because I'm shifting into a place called prosperous, prosperous season. I'm prosper. I prosper. In other words, that's another level. But then God says, hold up, like an infomercial, hold up, wait, there's more. And then he says, and he continued prospering. In other words, he didn't just get those. See, prosper was singular. He only was operating in a blessed place on one level and just enough because that's being content. But God says, hold up, wait, there's more. Because you followed the instructions and you sold in the land that I've instructed you. You tapped into something. God, am I talking to somebody? And he says he began to prosper. And then he says, comma, and continued prospering. In other words, don't get content with that one level of a blessing. God says, hold up. Wait, there's more. He says, and watch this. I'm here to tell you, you don't even have to pay shipping on this one. How am I talking to somebody? You, you don't even have to pay shipping on this one. He says, the man began to prosper and continued prospering. In other words, I'm going to allow their first level to roll more. I'm going to continue to bless you, God, on the one level that you are operating at. Then he says, and he continued prospering. How long did he continue prospering? Until he became very prosperous. Yes. In other words, watch this. This thing is an ongoing thing. There's level to this thing in this season. God says in your championship season, your legacy is about to be established. In your championship season, you're, you're about to walk into an overflow of blessings. In your championship season, watch this. Your mind can't even fathom uh, uh, what you... See, I was talking to my sister. She just came in. I was talking to my sister. Y'all, I'm going to tell y'all one of my desires. I'm going to let y'all in publicly. One of my desires is to own an airplane. That's one of my desires. 
Man, I was online over the weekend and just looking at planes, pricing them. And I told her what I and she said, "Oh no, your mind is your mind is thinking too small. See, 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 you, 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 your mind is thinking too small. You, you need to think bigger because now you're going to need to go ahead and put people on staff to fly you. You're going to need to take care of maintenance on the plane. You're going to need so. In other words, in other words, what she was saying was that even though the plane starts at two million, your mind needs to think on a whole nother level so that you watch this so that you can operate in a continuous prospering place. God, am I talking to somebody? And I want to encourage you all right now in this season. You are champions. You are not who God, what the enemy said you were, but you are in a championship season. And when you operate in the championship season, you'll never have to worry about a comeback season ever again. Am I talking to somebody? If, am I talking to somebody? You'll never have to walk in a comeback season again when our minds and we're obeying the voice of God, we, we, we're always thinking championship level. That's what separates uh, uh, the goats. That, that's what makes people like Jordan and Kobe and LeBron in that goat conversation, the greatest of all time. Why? Because their mind is always thinking on getting to the next level. Even in the midst of a famine, even when things don't look right, you're always thinking next level. You're always thinking next level. And God says in this season, you are going to walk as champions. We will never walk in a comeback season ever again. The only way that you'll walk in a comeback season, if you do not obey the voice of God. The only way you have to walk in another comeback season, if you don't obey the instructions, the voice, and the word of God. And I encourage you all to read Genesis 26 in, in, in its entirety. God says, I'm going to give you instructions. I'm going to tell you where to start sowing. I'm going to tell you where to start going. I'm going to tell you where to who to connect with. I'm going to tell you who not to connect with. I'm going to tell I'm going God says in this season it is so key that we follow in the instructions of the Father. It is so important that we follow the instructions of the Father. It is so important that we follow the instructions of the Father. It is so. This brother sowed in the midst of a famine. He sowed in a particular land, and because he heeded the instructions of the Father, the word says that he blessed them. He got back what he sowed. God added interest on it. He blessed it. He multiplied it. And watch this. And it was a continuous income. And not only you, but your children will prosper. Your children prosper. It's so important that we follow the instructions of God. It's so important because God's going to tell you specific places where to go, where to sow, who to connect, who to disconnect. Because your only growth is oh God. The reason why it's important that we, that we just don't sow just anywhere, that we just don't plant ourselves anywhere, Is because God says, I don't want to stunt your growth. God says, watch this. That's why it's so important that we pray in the Holy Spirit. Because watch this. If I pray in my natural, I'm praying stuff that sound good. But the Holy Spirit is praying the stuff that I need. And when you're not planted in the right place, when you're not planted in the right scenario, situation, you stunt your growth. True story. I was with uh I was out with one of my reps not long ago. And I was talking to this lady, and she had a fish tank in her office. 
And the fish were about that big. Yeah, the fish were about this big. And the tank was probably, so probably about, um, uh, it was probably about a 15, 20 gallon tank, I believe. I forgot, I should have asked her. And at first, I thought they were Oscars because of the, I, they look like koi. I said, no, nah, they're too small to be koi. So I'm thinking they're Oscars because they because of the size they were. I said, oh, man, those are nice Oscars. She said, no, those are koi's. I said, koi's? I said, I've never saw koi that small. She said, it's because it's the size of the tank. What happens is they grow and adapt to the size of the tank. If I were to put them in a much bigger tank or a pond, the note they would actually grow bigger. But because they're, 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 the tank is smaller, they, they, they grew. So in other words, what happens is when we're not planted in the right place, it stunts our growth. So if you hang around with people with small mindsets, without vision, oh, God, help me, somebody. When, when you hang with people with small mindsets, guess what? You're not going to grow. But as long as you hang with people that are going places, that God, oh, me, thank you, Holy Spirit. As long as you hang with people that God tells you who to hang out with. See, when you go where God tells you to go, you're walking a whole nother level of blessing. You're walking a whole nother level of favor. But if you walk with people that have limited minds, bro, uh, fixed mindsets, God, help me somebody. Guess what? You're also operating in a place of what they call limited beliefs. And so if you're going to walk in this championship season, you have to start shifting. Watch this. Can I use another sports vernacular, another term, another scenario in sports? The Detroit Lions, once upon a go, went through a season of 0-16. One in 15. You know, they had jacked up records, had a really good quarterback, but the organization was so structured in such a crazy way that there, there was no favor there. There was no favor in that organization. So what they did was there was another team, the, the Los Angeles Rams. They traded for this guy's quarterback. For the guy from the Detroit Lions. And people were like, oh, that's a bad trade, blah, blah, blah. The next year, the dude that got traded to Los Angeles Rams went on and won a Super Bowl. What are you saying, man of God? His culture changed. His culture changed. And when you change the culture, now you're hanging with people that want to win, that want to be victorious, that want to dominate. championship season. That's what made people like Kobe and Jordan, they were wired different. They were wired to want to win. They used things to help motivate them to win and to dominate. That was their fuel because, and because of that, they were successful in it. And so this whole year, we're going to be teaching on the championship season. And we're going to break it down into a, a couple pieces. We're going to break it down, you know, because right now we got to find out how do I win? How do I win? It's one thing to say that this is my championship season. How do I win? That's the question. How do I win? So, so one of the things that God has said, we're going to do something a little different this year. Um, we're actually going to implement, um, and I don't have it with me right now. Uh, it's on the other side of the room. I'm not going to get up and get it. Um, but we're going to eventually implement having midweek service. 
um, a midweek service, thinking either Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll talk with those that are connected, and you know, we're probably looking at Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, we're actually going to teach out of a book, and we're probably going to go about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, on top of what we're doing for Saturday. And but you know, God said, This is what I'm going to give you in order to execute championship season. We're going to break this thing down into four quarters. Four quarters. One of the quarters we're going to teach about putting a game plan together. Putting game plan. You know, the Bible says to write the vision down, make it plain. What's your game plan? We're going to put a game plan. Then we're going to talk about practicing it and doing things to help implement what we're teaching, um, implementing that and implementing those things. And then we're, we're going to now, once we put a game plan together, we're going to practice it. Then our next thing is we're going to talk about executing the game plan. Executing uh, uh, what the game plan is. And then the next thing, in order for us to... Once we put a game plan together, once we practice the game plan, uh, 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 once we execute the game plan, we in the game. Guess what? The last piece of it is we go win. We go win. We're going to win in our money. We're going to win on our job. We're going to win on our vision. We're going to win in our dreams. We're going to win in our ideas. We're going to win in this Christian walk. We're going to win in our faith. We're going to win in our marriage. We're going to win in our child children. We're going to win. When in our confidence, when in our esteem, our health. When? This is our game time. We didn't been, all of us, whether you're on here live on Zoom, whether you're on live on Facebook, whether you're live on Instagram, we didn't been through too much hell. Not that have some trophies in our tr in our trophy case. Not to have no championship banners hanging from our Raptors. We done been through too much. We done praise too much. We done worship too much. We done study too much. We done fasted too much. Not to have the fruits of it. It's not the God we serve. The God we serve, we're supposed to have fruits of our labor. We're supposed to have, we're supposed to have fruits. It's time for us to get some championship rings. It's time for us to have some victory laps. Yes, the comeback season was good. The comeback season, it, it was a blessing to me. It was a blessing to many of you all. Yeah, the comeback, the comeback season served its purpose. But here's the thing. When we operate according to who God says we are, we should have never had to have walked in a comeback season. We should have never had to experience a comeback season. So guess what, y'all? Comeback season was good, but now we bury that time in our life. We bury that. And now we walk in our championship season. We walk in our championship season. We walk in our championship season. Yes, the comeback was sweet. The comeback was cute. But we're seeds of Abraham. And God has given us instructions. The blessings of God are not, the blessings of the word of God says, the blessings of God are sure and they add no sorrow. There's no way that we, we bought cars in the past and they got repossessed. When I look back, I'm like, well, hold up. That wasn't a blessing from God. Watch this. It looked good to go get the car. Did we get the car that God told us to get initially? 
Because the word says that the blessings of God are sure and they add no sorrow or were we emotionalized when we made that purchase. I'm, I'm just asking. Now some of it, hey, we got to count up the cost. But the blessings of God are sure and they add no sorrow. So we should know that some of us, we, we shouldn't even have to experience a comeback season. If we did what Genesis 26 did, says, and that was to obey the voice and the instructions of God and go to where God told us to go. Why? Because we're seeds of Abraham. The championship, the, the comeback season was good. The comeback season was cute. We all made our comeback. I benefited from the comeback season, but that was not God's intent for us to even fall in that place. God desires for us to be a champion. Our goal, I, even in the midst of a recession, what the world calls it, even in the Isaac, it was in a famine. Abraham was in a famine. But what did the word say? Isaac sold in a famine. As believers, our goal is to win while the world goes to a famine. Our goal as God's intentions for believers are to win and thrive in the midst of a recession. Even though we live in this world, we're not of this world. We're champions. We are champions. Somebody put that in the chat. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. Put that in the chat. I'm a champion. I triumph. I triumph over my enemy. I triumph over my past. I triumph over my history. I triumph over the flaws in my bloodline. And I walk in the DNA that God is. I walk in my Abraham and Isaac DNA. I am victorious. I have, see, Ms. Bernice, see your name. Your, your name is prophetically declared victorious, Bernice. You, you, see, you're walking in it already, even though you're walking in it. Champion. You are a champion. And even in the midst of a famine, you flourish. You prosper and you continue prospering until you become prosperous. I've been wanting to release this word for probably the last two or three months. Championship season. This is your championship season. I dare some of you all to put that in your notes. Put it on your phone as your screensaver. Meditate on that. That this is a championship season. Your championship season. This is your championship season. And you prosper in all that you do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We honor you. We lift you up. We exalt you. We magnify who you are. And Father, I pray that everything we released on today, hmm, was a fresh fragrance to your nostrils that you're pleased with, Father. Father, I pray that this word resonates and manifests and, 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 and registers into the hearts and the minds of your people. Father, my prayer is that we just don't sit on it and say that, um, that this was a good word. And But Father, that we walk in this thing. We live this thing. We breathe this thing. We eat this thing. We taste this thing.
And Father, I know it. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for quickening our spirit. Even when the enemy tries to come, but Father, like a flood, that you will raise a standard. Father, I pray that we don't get weary in this championship season because we understand that champions come with adversity. There's going to be some highs. There's going to be some lows. But Father, just like you prayed, just like Jesus prayed, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But I pray that your faith doesn't fail in the process. I pray, Father, that we keep a hold of your word. We follow the instructions of your word. Father, I pray that we flourish in our business. We flourish in our ministries. But we prosper in our bank accounts. We prosper in our marriage. We prosper with our children. We prosper on our jobs. We prosper in our health. We prosper in every aspect of our life. And so, Holy Spirit, we activate you to take us by the hand, lead us, guide us, instruct us where you want us to go. I pray that your word begins to jump off the pages as we study it. Father, I pray that we're so in tune with your voice. We're so in tune with your sound. That, Father, even as we drive our car, Holy Spirit, that you will give us instructions on which go, whether go left, whether go right. Holy Spirit, I pray that you lead us and guide us on what to eat, what not to eat. What to say to our spouses? What do we say to our children? What not to say? Who to connect with? Who not to, who to disconnect from? Because, Father, this is our championship year. This is the year we raise the banners of home ownership, debt freedom, seven, eight hundred credit scores. This is the year that we walk in that. Our children come home, houses coming into alignment, houses take order. Husbands take the rightful position in their homes. Healings take place. Champions. And Father, each one of us will raise our own trophies and banners at the end of this year, throughout the year. Multiple championship victory, multiple wins. So, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hmm. Well, winners, y'all. This is the season that we went in. This is the championship season. This is the year that we dominate. My prayer is that um, you stay encouraged. You walk on it. You walk in it. Just don't let it say we came together today. We had a good word. No, we walk in this. There's going to be some adversity. I'm not speaking gloom and doom. But that's what champions are made of. How do you handle the famine seasons? How do you handle uh, um, um, adversity? My brother Felix says it this way. Iron sharpens iron but you can't stay sharp hanging around butter knife people. In other words, there's going to be some conflict or things, but it's all there to keep you sharp, to keep you on point. Follow the instructions of God in this season. God's going to start giving you game plans. Um, there's more out of Genesis 26 that we'll eventually teach out of but I encourage you all to read Genesis 26 all in its entirety. Um, we read one through five, and then we jumped down to verse 12 as well. Um, if the Lord has laid it on your heart to sow into what we're doing, um, please do. You can do it one or two ways. You can do it via PayPal, rpbible1 at yahoo.com, rpbible1 at yahoo.com. Or you can do it um, via cash app, dollar sign, E-M-P-M-I-N, dollar sign, E-M-P-M-I-N. Um, for those that continue to sow, those that continue to support, those that continue to tithe into what we do, um, we pray in above and beyond measure, return back into your life. 
um, we we pray that uh, back into your life. Um, 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 mm, thank you, Lord. Um, if you, for those that want to give their lives to Christ on today, you may not be saved, but you may say, you know what, man, this word really blessed. And if the Lord, if the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart, the Bible says the day you hear my voice, heart and not your heart. And if you say, you know, I want to give my life to Christ, if that's you, uh, just put in the chat me and we'll, we'll walk you through the, the prayer of salvation. We'll walk you through that. Um, if you may say, you know what, man of God, I just want to rededicate myself to life, to Christ, back to Christ. Um, just go ahead and put in the chat, rededicate. Oh, um, um, or three, if you just say, you know what, man of God, I just want to eat special prayer. If that's you, just put in the chat prayer and we'll, we'll pray with you. Um, you know, but I just want to encourage you, man, um, in this season, you are champions. We are champions. And we win and prosper in all that we do. So I'm excited, man, what this year has to bring. Uh, a couple, like I said, there's going to be a couple of changes that we're going to do a little bit this year. Um, we're looking in February, um, either the Tuesday or Wednesday in February. And we'll get it. There's a book. And I wish I had it. It's on the yeah it's i'll have it next week um a book but i want you guys to go ahead and order uh i'll let you know what book to order um but it's by miles monroe it's called the principles and power of vision principles and power of vision we're going to read that uh, we're going to walk through that together um in this coming season we're going to walk through that um on 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 Hey, Visha, blessing to you, blessing to you. Um, we're going to walk you all through that. We're going to walk through it together. Uh, and there's a couple more. We're going to, like I said, we're going to have some midweek service uh, as well. We'll do those probably private Zoom or through our private Facebook page as well. We'll do it through both. Um, but I just want us to walk through this book together. Um, it, it blessed my life a few years ago, and I said I want to put it back into the rotation um, to really help us. And it helps me. One of the book my mentor uh, gave me a couple of years ago and I've read it and it's been a blessing to me. Um, other than that, man, I thank you all. I honor you all. Um, I want to wish you all, each and every one of you all, a happy new year. Walking your championship season. Um, this is your victory season. Get ready to do some victory laps. Yeah, get ready to do some victory laps. Get ready to celebrate um, some successes um, in your life. But other than that, man, God bless you all. I love you to life. Um, enjoy your time with your family. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll be back next week on Zoom at 10 o'clock a.m. Saturday morning. And Facebook, Instagram, uh, 10 after 10. And the only reason why is because we play videos uh on zoom at 10 o'clock and you know we don't want to get shut down on facebook so or social media but other than that guys that's the new word for the year it's championship season that is the word for the year championship season so other than that guys god bless you all love you to life have an amazing day we'll see you all next week